I pray at night, but I sleep. I fast by day, some days, and break it, others. Asumu wa uftir. And I have taken the responsibility, not of one, but different women. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man raghiba an sunnati falaysa minni. The one who strays from my sunnah, once again leaving that path, has left our ummah, has left the truth. There's no room within our place and within our confines of Islam for those who seek more than what the Prophet wanted. To those who have a self-righteous interest in their need to fulfill a worship to Allah. Whatever was not brought to us by the Messenger Muhammad Wasallam is foreign to us. It's as if it was not a part of our faith. And this is one of the marvels of Iman as well, my dear brothers and sisters. Just as we mentioned, Iman increases with good deeds. Those good deeds are confined to what the Prophet requested of you, showed you in his life. Asked of you and modeled in his habit and in his behavior because he was an uswatul hasana, the best of examples to us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Finally, before Jilfatul Istaraha, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this wondrous hadith about increasing our iman, he makes mention that as a natural part of our belief in Allah is that iman tarnishes. Naturally, as much faith as you have in Allah. There are moments of climax and peaks in your faith and in your relationship with Allah. And naturally there must also be a plateau. And naturally there are moments of dips. And this would happen even to the best of the Sahaba of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you find even the greatest of the Sahaba, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. One day... An incident occurred with his daughter Aisha radiallahu anha, hadithat al-ifq. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha was innocent of that forgery. And Abu Bakr heard that a man that he used to give charity to was one of those who spoke ba- bad of Aisha. And Abu Bakr in a moment of impulse and anger, justified. He's right to be angry. He says, Wallahi la atasaddaqu lah. I'm never going to give him charity again, this man. All these years I've given him charity and I hear now he's speaking bad about me and my family, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who happens to be my daughter. And Allah corrects him in the Quran. Let not those who have been given fadl, blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be unkind to those who they used to give charity to. Don't be overcome with that emotion. Iman at times can become overcome with anger with jealousy, with the sins of the soul, which we will talk about insha'Allah after Jilfat al-Istiraha. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim madi wa lakum. Alhamdulillah wahda wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiya ba'da Muhammad ibn Abdullah alayhi abdal al-salaa wa atamu al-taslim. What causes our iman to naturally depart? <coughs> You, my dear brother and sister in Islam, are made up of three parts. You are made up of a soul, you are made up of a mind, and you are made up of a body, badan. Sadly, we look after our body more than our mind and more than our soul. So when you get sick, you run to the doctor. If you need education, you come, alhamdulillah, we are here in Murdoch University. And one of the last things, which in fact should be the most important thing, the soul is not looked after, is not nurtured. And it's left unrestrained. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى And in another ayah, surely the one who purifies his soul, who protects his soul, who looked after his inner being, will be successful on the day of judgment. The things that eat away our iman are of two types. Only two. Every mistake we make in life can be chased to these two things. Either it is shahwa, lust, desire. Or it is shubha, doubt. Unknowing of our relationship with Allah. Doubting Allah. The moment you miss fajr, you've doubted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not, you're sure, you believe in Allah, but there's doubt that Allah will call you on the day of judgment and ask you. The moment you cheat someone, you're doubtful that Allah is available and aware of what you're doing. 
The moment you harm someone, you're doubting that Allah is able to reverse it and you'll be put in harm. The moment you're sick and you rely upon the doctor rather than Allah, you're doubtful that the cure is with Allah alone. The moment you're in poverty and you look to others with jealousy and envy, you doubt Allah is a razzaq. Doubt. You're not firm in your iman. And this happens to all of us in various levels. The moment we commit the impulse of dishonesty, of taking, of harming, of speaking, of attaining, in that which is unlawful, it's one of those two. Doubt in Allah or lust that overwhelms ourself. And therefore the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us at the conclusion of that hadith that we're studying. فَسَلُوا اللَّهَ أَنْ يُجَدِّذَ الْإِيمَانَ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ Each and every one of you, me and them, back then, in our time, in our coming time, all of us, the Prophet ﷺ says to our ummah, فَسَلُوا اللَّهَ أَنْ يُجَدِّذَ الْإِيمَانَ Be continuous in asking Allah to renew the faith that is in your heart. It's an impossibility to feel secure. It is an impossibility to feel that you are at a level, alhamdulillah, I'm at a good level. لا يأمن مكر الله None is free from thinking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can overwhelm them. Can you hear the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And this hadith is narrated by his two wives, Umm Salama and Aisha. Meaning he used to make it in his home. It was something that was personal to him. He would say, Ya Muthabbit al Qulub. Oh Allah who makes the heart steadfast. Thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Make my heart firm upon your faith. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You say at the end of your salah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Because you recognize that even in your salah, you haven't done anything wrong. But you know Allah deserves better than the worship you've just offered. You ask Allah for his pardon. You hope that Allah will overlook those deficiencies in your life. سَلُوا اللَّهَ أَنْ يُجَدِّدَ الْإِيمَانَ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ How do we rejuvenate our faith? And the ulama, in particular Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, he has a three-step approach. Simple. Three things. Easily said, difficult to maintain and practice. He says, first, don't miss what Allah asks. Allah said, salah, salah. Allah says, fajr, fajr, salah. Don't miss the obligation. It's easy to be said, but Allah tells you, وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرًا By Allah, it is difficult. Surely it is a difficult task. إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Except to those who have khushu' in their heart. It's difficult to attain it. To find steadfastness in salah. Continuously, day in, day out, week after week, month after month, till the end of our life. Kabira. But that's the first step. Aim to fulfill the obligations of Allah. Mu'adh ibn Jabal asked the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, tell me of something that will lead me to the gates of Jannah and close the gates of Jahannam. The Prophet ﷺ says, Sa'alta an, an kabir, you've asked about something great. وَإِنَّهُ لَيَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ It's something big to do. But it's easy for whom Allah wants it. What is it so big? The Prophet says, أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكْ بِهِ شَيْئًا Worship Allah alone, don't worship anything else. وَتُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَتَصُومْ شَهْرَ رَمَضَانِ Pay your zakah. وَتَحُجَّ الْبَيْتِ إِنَ الصَّبَاعِ That's it. That's the Prophet's answer, so I said, the essentials. Second, Imam al-Ghazali, he says, be in the service of others. كُنْ فِي عَوْنَ الْعِبَادِ Help others. In any way you can. With your time, with your time. You're good with chemistry? Help some of your brothers, some of your sisters who aren't. It's as simple as that. Look for an opportunity to show generosity towards others. Third and finally, third and finally, he says, when you make a mistake, return to Allah. That's it. Made a mistake, come back to Allah. Made a mistake, come back to Allah. 
make a mistake, anibu ila rabbikum. Make a mistake, come back to Allah. Our faith is the only tawheed. It is only that tawheed that gives us hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You and I are the only people, the people of this faith, who have a con- direct connection with Allah. سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب. They ask you about me, I'm near. أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان. When they ask me, I answer. You don't need someone between you and Allah. You don't need a sacred ritual. You don't need a specific bath. You do what leads you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us in this dunya and in the akhirah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our hearts to the truth so that we can follow it and to show us the falsehood so that we can be aware of it and distant. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, our families, our loved ones with hidayah that arrives only from him. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to overlook our mistakes and bless us with a tawbah and nasuh. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us from the Quran the things we don't know and to help us remember the things that we may have forgotten. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in all good in this dunya and in the akhirah. Allahumma izz al-islam wal muslimin wa akhdi al-a'da'a ka'a'da al-deen. Allahumma inna alayhim ya arham al-rahimin. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdibina wa ja'alna sababan liman ihtada. Allahumma atina fi al-dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab al-nar. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa zid wa barik ala sayyidina wa nabiyina wa habibina Muhammad. صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأقم الصلاة